Hey everybody, it's That Drew Line, and today we're going to be talking about paddles. Paddles can vary a lot from uh, deep, heavy, thuddy paddles to light, slappy, stingy paddles. There's a variety of shapes and sizes and things that you can consider when you're making your paddle. The biggest thing to remember is that uh, it always comes down to what materials you've chosen. In this case, our paddle is going to be pretty heavy. We've chosen a very solid piece of uh, red oak to use that with. This is a five by five inch board. Um, it was five foot long originally and 5.5 inches across and about an inch in uh, thickness here. And uh, this is going to be a real heavy spanking paddle. Obviously if you wanted to make something lighter or smaller it's going to affect the way that this one works. This one should come out pretty thuddy when we're done with it. Other things you can do might be to add padding or uh, again change the material entirely. Go for something maybe uh, more creative like a laminate or uh, even a plastic or acrylic. A lot of options when it comes to paddles, so uh, creativity is always the limit. Uh, like I said, this one is going to be out of that uh, 5 by 5.5 uh, 5 uh, inch uh, by about 1 inch uh, red oak board, and I've already traced my pattern out on this. The biggest thing to consider when you're making a paddle is the handle portion. This is going to be the structurally weakest point of your paddle, so you need to make sure that it has a good, solid, heavy connection between the handle and the paddle, so it's most likely going to be breaking right there. Uh, in this case, I think I've done a fairly good job with a nice thick handle. This should be uh, lasting for a very long time. Um, so the main thing you have to do first is start out by making measurements along your board and then sketching out the designs. If you're not that good at curves like I am, try to find something uh, round that you can use to make the size curves that you want. This could be as small as a bottle cap or as big uh, like the roll of duct tape that I've used to measure my curves here. Uh, this just simply traced the edge from uh, the points that I wanted and it's given me some very even lines that I was able to use to basically make sure that this would always be uh, a nice, a nice uh, even curve on that. Uh, I've also got places here marked out where I'm going to be uh, drilling holes for better airflow, increase its speed, and I've also got some markings down here where I plan to do some custom carving. We're not going to get too much into the custom carving this time around. I want to show you more of the basics uh, of the basic woodworking construction. And uh, there's a lot of great tutorials on YouTube already for carving techniques, so I'm sure you can find some of those that can apply. Um, the tools that we're going to be using today are going to be a jigsaw. We're going to be using this with a, uh, a curve cutting blade. Of course, you can always get these uh, at any local hardware store for your uh, jigsaw. If you don't have a, uh, a nice power tool like this, you can go with a coping saw, a hand saw that can make those nice uh, smooth curves as well. Also, if you are planning on adding holes for additional airflow, you're going to need your power drill. If you're planning on doing a lot of custom shaping, you can obviously sand it back, but that's going to take a lot longer time. You can also pick up one of these, it's just a scraper. Uh, scrapers are excellent for taking off uh, hard edges off of your piece just by simply cutting them down your, uh, the, the wood length slowly and consistently. It's going to really give you a nice rounded smooth edge when you're done with it. So we're also going to use uh, this today in part of that shaping technique. Um, great. Well, with that being said, I think it's time to get started. Uh, once you've got your pattern out on your board, again, creativity is the limit here. Um, you can go ahead and clamp your piece down to your workstation. We're going to begin cutting. Um, I'm afraid to say my uh, vise is too small to be able to really hold this board effectively, so I'm just going to use it more as a clamp today. And we're going to just use the jigsaw to make these nice cuts. The main thing to think about when you're doing precise, intricate cutting work like this is to always curve away from the wood. If you feel like you're going to be messing up, you want to make sure that you uh, curve away from your pattern. You can always take away more wood later, but you can never add it back once it's gone. So, that being said, I'm going to kind of stand up, make this uh, so I can watch vertically over this cut and make sure that it's exactly what I'm looking for.
Okay, what I started out by doing here is I'm just kind of getting it a rough cut. So that way then when I kind of go in, I don't have to deal with all this extra wood in the way. Uh, it's definitely an excellent way just to kind of size up. Excellent way just to size up what you're doing and uh, make your job a lot easier. One thing to really watch out for when you're using a saw like this is that you need to make sure that you watch the speed and angles in which you make your cuts. The reason I say that is because you can see right here and the reason why I sort of backed away from my edge is because I'm definitely not plumb. You can see there's an obvious curve right there in that wood that is not vertical. So uh, again, just to kind of make this easier, I'm going to kind of go a little slower. I'm probably going to pause the camera here while I uh, make these cuts. Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a couple quick notes on using the scraper tool here. This scraper tool is excellent for smoothing out any unevenness in some of your cuts, but it may not work quite in all areas because of its uh, specific shape, especially if you've got curves like mine. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you are going to need to go back either with a saw or some sandpaper to smooth those out. But it is great for getting a lot of the unevenness that might be in some of your longer cuts. Um, these are going to be excellent for just kind of getting over that top layer, using it like sandpaper, except it's going to be taking over, taking out quite a bit more than sandpaper would, and it is going to smooth out what it is that you've made here. So, excellent. Uh, I'm going to kind of get back to slowly smoothing this out. It's going to take it'll take me a while, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the camera, and we'll be back in a bit. All right. So a lot of our lines have been really smoothed and sanded out. A lot more even consistent strokes and again that whole process was just simply slowly shaving it down this is a long and tedious process I did actually mess up on the uh, on the pummel I guess is what I'll call that here um, but at the same time I think in the final version it's not gonna matter too much I'll have plenty of time to between sanding and things like that even out this uh, the stroke quite a bit the next stage that I'm gonna work on is going to be the uh, carving stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be carving back this handle to be a little bit more oblong uh, and fit a little bit better in the hand just by rounding off these edges pretty substantially. Same exact motion just again long strokes slowly trimming down this wood and you're going to end up with sort of these sort of trails and things like that and with a scraper like this you might have some rough edges but that's where we're going to come back and sand to fix that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get back in and continue just slowly shaving and shaping down this handle. Um, the key is to go again, go very slowly, very consistently, so that way you end up with a nice, uh, even, smooth looking handle. So now I've finished doing the scraping portion. The scraping portion where I uh, smoothed out these saw cuts, it's now looking much more even. A lot of my saw cuts are looking much smoother. As a note, you can mess up some of those uh, uh, some of the scraping here. As you can see, I did make my pummel a little uneven. I've been slowly working at it to get it a bit more even. I'm thinking I'm just going to wait till I uh, get to the sanding process to make that easy. Uh, the next stage that I'm going to do is again more scraper work here. But this is where I'm going to kind of come in and shape this hand a little bit more. That's just where you want to take long, even, consistent strokes and slowly carve back this edge so that way it fits nicely in the hand. I'm going to go slightly oblong with its shape um, and again we're going to kind of round this out pretty majorly and then I'm going to go and just take a couple of strokes down either side just to slightly even out this edge as well. And really that's about all the strokes that I really want on this. I still want it to be a relatively rigid edge. I just want to take that hard part off. Uh, so again, just make sure to watch your, uh, watch your corners there because a lot of these corners can be somewhat difficult to uh, get in there and do. If you have any problems, always resort to sandpaper as your second alternative. This is a 60 grit sandpaper, which is also pretty excellent at just slowly shaping away these edges and making them smooth. Well, great guys. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I go ahead and get this next stage done. Uh, again, just slow, even, consistent strokes. Get the carving shapes that you want out of uh, out of your implement here. Everybody, now it's time to uh, drill the airflow holes that I'm going to add into this guy. I decided to go with a zigzag pattern with my holes, just for a little bit of interest on the paddle. 
Um, of course, you can add more holes if you want it to be a little bit faster, a little bit lighter. You can add less holes or no holes if you want it to be a thicker, thuddier paddle. So in this case, I'm just going to be uh, drilling through these marks that I've made. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple swings, see if I like its weight. If not, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill out a couple more holes or make the holes bigger. All right, the holes do need to be a bit bigger, so we are going to go ahead and make them bigger. So I thought I'd show you guys the technique that I'm using to uh, scrape down this. I'm sort of holding this between my legs and scraping over the holes taking away as little wood as possible but just enough to kind of get rid of some of these nicks and things like that left by the uh, by the drill so I'm just gonna kinda keep working on a uh, nice long stroke here taking away uh, the edges there to make them nice and smooth holes buddy uh, now it's time for the more tedious part which is sanding uh, I did go ahead and I've gotten all those holes scraped there's still a little bit uh, here and there where it's a little bit uneven but that's because they're so deep into the wood, so I'm mainly going to focus on sanding those out smooth. Sanding is pretty simple. It's just a lot of work when you don't have a power sander. I currently don't have a power sander. It's one of the things that I need to get. So um, if you're like me, just kind of settle in for the long haul and uh, sand, sand the heck out of it. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and kind of clean out these holes a little bit better. Uh, what I've got here is I've got my power drill with one of my Dremel bits. Uh, because my Dremel's on the fritz, this just seemed like the best solution to try to do it. Um, obviously, this is not recommended by the manufacturer, but it definitely works pretty well. If you have a Dremel, obviously use that instead. But uh, this does work uh, decently. Basically, basically what we're going to do is um, we're just basically going to kind of run this around the rim of the hole and uh, slowly kind of smooth away that uh, rougher edge. I'm using just kind of a spherical bit. I'm probably going to be switching bits a little bit so I can buff on the inside of that hole as well and sand those smooth too. All right, so all of our whole edges have been buffed out with that sphere bit. Now I'm going to kind of go back with this uh, cylinder bit and we're going to clean out the inside of these holes, making sure they're nice and smooth. Obviously we just don't want any extra raw edges in there that make our project look a little uh, junky. So uh, again, if you have a Dremel tool, use that. If not, do the best you can. Another option might be sandpaper on a dowel rod or wrapped around a pencil. Uh, that could also be excellent choice for, uh, for trying to sand down these uh, edges. Alright, so all of our whole edges have been buffed out with that sphere bit. Now I'm going to kind of go back with this uh, cylinder bit, and we're going to clean out the inside of these holes, making sure they're nice and smooth. Obviously we just don't want any extra raw edges in there that make our project look a little uh, junky. So uh, again, if you have a Dremel tool, use that. If not, do the best you can. Another option might be sandpaper on a dowel rod or wrapped around a pencil. Uh, that could also be excellent choice for, uh, for trying to sand down these uh, edges. Alright, so what I have here is I've got a number two pencil with my 60 grit paper on it and uh, 60 grit sandpaper. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that just to simply uh, sand out all of the holes. Uh, it's pretty easy going, although it is going to take some time just because it's, uh, well, it's manual sanding and that's the nature of the game. So uh, basically, just simply. Try to move it in a kind of clockwise motion so that way you get even sanding around the edges and just kind of watch as it gets nice and smooth. Alright, that uh, has sanded out all of the holes down to our 60 grit. Now it's time to sand the rest of the piece down to the 60 grit as well. 
For that, I'm using the uh, sanding sponge that I had before, but in this case, I'm going to use the uh, 60 grit paper. I'm just going to kind of fold it on over so that way I have it uh, there on my uh, wedge. And I'm just basically going to sand the ever loving crap out of it. Uh, it's probably going to take, oh, 30, 45 minutes to hand sand a piece like this. Again, I'm not going to make you guys watch, but normal sanding technique is just to simply go in a circular pattern along the piece and um, buff out any scratches that you, uh, that you might have had from your scraper or other things that you've done. So this just simply is time and patience for a nice smooth finish. So take your time, maybe even take a couple of days just to kind of really sand into it and get it nice. Um, but uh, as much time as you take, the better your finish is going to be. So uh, great, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get to sanding. Well, all right, that uh, just about settles up the 60 grit paper here. I think we're going to go ahead and move on to the 180. So keep sanding away, guys. Hey, everybody. I decided to wrap up this week's project a little bit early. I haven't finished it. As you can see, it's still just bare wood. Uh, this is just after I finished all the sanding. I was playing around with it a lot last night and I noticed several things. One is I have a lot more tool marks that I need to work out through more sanding. And the other thing is that it's incredibly out of balance. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to modify this uh, handle portion. You can already see I sketched out where I'm going to be going with the design. And I'm going to be adding some sort of a counterbalance weight on the, uh, on, that, on the end there. So that way it'll actually have a really good center of gravity and uh, make it a lot easier to swing. Last night while I was kind of whacking a pillow with it, it was uh, actually starting to hurt my wrist because the thing is so heavy. When I added the counterweight, it made it a dream to swing. So I decided that it's worth taking the extra week just to make sure that the project turns out well. Um, however, if you guys are doing your thing, really all you'd have to do is just sand and uh, finish from here. So if you've had a little bit better luck, maybe go with a smaller uh, project, it would definitely turn out much easier for you here. Um, and you could probably just go straight on to finishing, but because I'm going to be going a little bit bigger, um, I think it's definitely worth it to take that extra week. Anyway, folks, um, I look forward to posting the final project next week, and uh, if you guys have any good ideas on what I can use for a counterweight on the end, I would really appreciate it because uh, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Thanks again, guys, and uh, I look forward to talking to you all next week.